At number 5 on the list, we have the Slingshot from Twilight Princess. Not to be confused with the Ocarina of Time Slingshot, which is actually pretty useful. This Slingshot is probably the most useless item in the game. A lot of people seem to think this item is useless as soon as you get the bow and arrow, because, you know, the bow and arrow is superior in literally every single aspect. But honestly, this thing is useless as soon as you get it, because you only really use it two times in the first dungeon. And I think the first time you can skip using it by throwing a pot or like rolling into the wall or something. Like, this, this, this thing is terrible. The range is bad. It shoots at an arc. Look what happens when you hit this guy. He just, he just stands there and does nothing. He ignores it. He's not even pursue you. You have to run and chase him to fight him. At number 4 we have the Leaf Shield from Mega Man 2. The Leaf Shield was a neat idea and it could have been a cool item. It actually really could have. It just suffered from one major design flaw. It goes away when you move. Like, it's like a shield that, of leaves. Obviously you can see in the video. Like, it, it surrounds your whole body and protects you. But as soon as you move, it goes away. So like, what's the point? The only time it's useful in the entire game is this stage right here where you're just like walking forward and you have to stop and use the shield and nothing can hurt you. But like, what's the point? It might as well just be a giant loading screen. It's not like you can fail it because they so much health drops. Like you don't need this leaf shield for this part. But if you wanted to use it, that's fine. But it just, I don't know, it's, it's just boring. And this is, this is the only part in the game where you can like use it. At number 3 on the list, we have the Spots 12 from Modern Warfare 3. In Modern Warfare 3, in order for your shotguns to actually do damage, you have to level them up individually, separate from your player level, to unlock the damage proficiency. The reason this gun sucks is because this takes forever, because the gun is so bad without it. Like, look look at these point blank hit markers. Like, look how many shots it takes to kill this guy. They, they just don't die. Like you think, okay, maybe he missed a little bit there, but it just gets worse. Like this is like slowed down so you can see it. Like they expect you to like play for hours with that to unlock and level up with it. Like look at look from his perspective, he just turns around. He has so much time to turn around. He's playing on like one sensitivity. At number two, we have the wooden sword from Kingdom Hearts. I'm not talking about the time you spent on Destiny Island where the sword was actually useful. I'm talking about the random, cringeworthy, out of character moment where Donald and Goofy just randomly betray Sora for some reason. I don't know. I don't know. I, I never really kind of got this moment. It didn't make sense to me years ago when I played this game as a kid, and it doesn't really make sense now, but that's not the point. The point is the sword. It's so bad. Like, look how much damage I'm doing. None. No damage at all. All you can do is block attacks, like if they attack you at the same time you attack them. And sometimes it looks like you're doing damage, but that's really just Beast doing that. And speaking of which, it's, it's kind of weird that Beast just shows up right at the moment where you pretty much need him. Or you wouldn't really be able to advance. That's, that's just great. This was a tough choice. Like, I wasn't sure if this was quite worthy of being number one. It's, it's not as useless as the next item I'm about to show you, but it's, it's still pretty up there. It, it's pretty bad. At number one on the list, we have the worst weapon in the history of the Zelda franchise, the Giant's Knife. Even the name is subpar. There's so many bad things about this sword, like the inconvenience of getting it, the price you have to pay for it, but most people seem to agree that the absolute worst thing about it is like, it breaks. Like look at that, after a few hits on the wall, it just shatters in a thousand pieces. It, it's so annoying. The only thing it's good for is killing Dark Link, but even then you're just like, you're missing out on a great boss fight because you're just doing the same thing over and over. Like look, does that look like fun? Like that just, that takes the whole point, that just kills the whole point of doing this. Like, nah man, don't don't use this sword. Just, there's no reason to ever use this sword. The reason I hate this sword so much is because when you're playing this game as a kid, you don't expect the sword to break. So when it does break, you think, oh no, I did something wrong. What did I do? So what do you do? The first thing you do is you gather up the rubies again and you try to buy it again and then you end up wasting like two hours just buying the sword over and over and over and trying to find ways to make it not break. There is no way to make the sword not break but there is a similar sword th that you can get for free but you have to do a, like a really long trade side quest but it doesn't break and it's 100% worth it so I recommend doing that instead. Of course as a kid I didn't know this because we didn't have the internet and we didn't buy strategy guys so. We pretty much never saw it.
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like rating. And if I missed anything, I'm sorry. It's only a top five. I couldn't think of like four other things. I wanted to add the club from GoldenEye, but I couldn't find any like good footage of it. So sorry about that. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.